Good afternoon, friends. This is Sandra Clay. I am the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and it is a joy to be able to be with you today. Uh, for those of you who join us on a on a regular basis, um, I appreciate your patience uh, and your understanding uh, for us to have postponed this from our regular time at 8.30 in the morning. And for those of you who are finding us or someone has shared um, our work with you uh, by video, uh, <clears throat> either referring uh, you to the Cooks page or uh, by YouTube, um, I just want you to know that we hold you in our prayers um, and we love you. Uh, we may not know your name, but it would be a joy for us to walk alongside you. Uh, we believe that uh, God has given us to one another and that each one of us bears the image of God. And so we are called uh, to share in God's divine purpose. Uh, in particular, let me share uh, this with you. The reason why we were not uh, together this morning for live stream is because our friend Susie uh, has passed from this life uh, into the life that enfolds her in the church triumphant. And so our prayers of celebration are for uh, a faithful life uh, lived with uh, purpose and with hope, uh, even in the midst of imperfection. And our prayers go out to um, the rest of Susie's family and all of those who called her friend and neighbor, uh, that we would know God's peace and God's comfort as we remember that in uh, Christ, Susie's life never ends. Um, so I know that you'll want to hold that family, especially in this time of grief for them. And I'm just going to confess, I, I thought really long and hard about changing um, uh, the scripture that I had intended for us to talk about today. Uh, but the more I thought and prayed and asked God to show me what to do, we're sticking with it. So you see the verse there, Matthew 23, 5. And I want to tell you first uh, why uh, we're pressing ahead. And it has a lot to do with Susie. Many of you know that her grandchildren referred to her often as Grandma Jingle. Uh, they call her Grandma Jingle because she's got so many bracelets on and so many baubles that she often jingles when she walks. Um, I happen to uh, love that about not only Susie, but her encouragement of everyone that she knows and loves and had an occasion to meet, uh, for she would encourage you to let your life kind of jingle in a way that inspires and brings joy uh, to other people. And it's the jingling in our lives, in our faith journey that Jesus is addressing. Uh, now he comes at it in a backwards way because the topic of discussion happens to do uh, happens to be the way religious leaders of his day are living their lives of faith um, and what others might be able to see in them. And so it's a very short verse. I want to encourage you to go and read um, the larger context before and after that in Matthew's gospel. But before I read the verse, let's remember Matthew's gospel, one of four. Uh, and the very first uh, that's in the New Testament is one of three uh, that are called the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, their chronology and their content are very much alike. And John's stands against not as um, a, a refutation of those first three, but the chronology is not always the same. And there is additional comment in uh, content in John that's not in the others. And Matthew's gospel, uh, as the other, th uh, the other two synoptics are, is really pointed toward um, everybody, but also a specific group at the same time. And Matthew's gospel was really pointed to the Jews. So they're going to hear this verse much differently than those of us who don't jingle the way they do. And by that, I mean we don't wear phylacteries and we don't wear tassels. But do we? Okay, here's the reason for the question. Let's read the verse together. 
everything they do, they is referring to legal es experts, um, uh, lawyers, um, uh, leaders in the church, particularly the Pharisees, everything they do, they do to be noticed by others. They make extra wide prayer bands for their arms and long tassels for their clothes. Now you can read the rest of that 23rd chapter and you can hear um, a full indictment by Jesus and really the opportunity to live um, beyond this uh, needing to be noticed. But it's enough for us, I think, right now to look at this one verse. Uh, the two things that you heard him reference, prayer bands and tassels, we need to talk about. Prayer bands, uh, the official word is phylacteries. And phylacteries are uh, an amulet or a, a capsule of sorts that contains a, a little parchment roll, a scroll with Hebrew texts on it. And um, uh, even in business today, you'll see phylacteries uh, on doorways uh, where those who work inside are um, members of the Jewish faith. Um, in Jesus's day and even earlier, those phylacteries would have been worn around uh, the left upper arm or perhaps around the forehead, uh, sometimes even at the wrist. Um, those scrolls were taken out and used uh, at morning prayer. It was believed that wearing the Word of God, um, being reminded of God's Word, God's ab uh, uh, um, admonition, God's uh, command, those things w w kind of warded against evil spirits. Uh, but it also was a reminder of who and whose you are so that your thoughts and your behaviors would be regulated. Now, we know now um, with a measure of science that maybe they were not aware of uh, that uh, I'm the, it's not God who controls my behavior. I am the one by choosing a particular um, pathway in life. I, I'm responsible for my own behavior. Jesus is saying that they often made extra wide prayer bands. Well, you don't need it wider to hold the scroll. Um, that was all for appearance. And the same thing for tassels. Tassels um, were uh, sewn at the corners of um, a cloak uh, so that they would kick up dust. And in particular, uh, there are references in the Old Testament. They often carried um, blue threads or uh, blue cords uh, within them. Uh, according to the directions that were given in the uh, construction of the tabernacle and how to remind yourself uh, that you are not your own. So these tassels at the four corners would kick up dust as the, per as the man walked. And that dust um, kind of clouding the air would remind the wearer that they don't just walk on their own, but they are walking on the law of God, that they are walking on precepts and commands that come not from their own best wisdom, but from that of God. The bigger the tassel, the more the dust, but was the dust for the wearer? or for everyone else to notice the robe and so the tassels or to think of those representative symbols uh, as a measure of a larger faith, um, a more, a, a greater spiritual significance by person. Now you and I know God doesn't work that way and so it leads me to ask these questions. Oh, by the way, I wanted to tell you this. So when, um, when you look at uh, the word uh, notice, uh, and again, I read from the common English that everything they do, they do to be noticed. Notice in the Greek language, that's the language of the New Testament, 
Notice means to be looked upon, to be contemplated, uh, to be influenced by, um, to view, and so the sight that comes into your eyes somehow impacts you spiritually, your spirit, your soul. The root of that word is the same root that uh, we get the English word theater from. Theamoi. And so we're talking about playing a role here. So the questions this leads me to ask myself about my own behavior, about what I do, even when I think my actions, my words, even my thoughts are between me and God, why do I do what I do? I think we've got two options here. One, we do it for others to notice and so think something in particular. Uh, in this case, the Pharisees, the scribes, the leaders in the religious culture there, they, um, the big uh, tassels and the bigger cloud of dust, also those large prayer bands or phylacteries, they, the impetus was for somebody else to notice how big or how beautiful they were and think of that person in a particular way. It was to sway the viewer into believing that somehow the size of the tassel or the size of the phylactery was a measure of the size of the faithfulness of that person. Well, that didn't work that way either. And so the next part of that possibility would be that is it possible that we do what we do in order for others to notice and think something about God. I think the intention of the phylacteries and the tassels and whatever else it is you do, teach Sunday school, wear a cross around your neck, uh, go to church every Sunday, uh, speak in the ways that you do, limit yourself or include yourself, whatever those behaviors are, is it because you want people to notice something in you and you hope that that will point to God or are you really wanting to point to yourself, to feel better about yourself? We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. The other option, part B, to that first uh, wanting others to notice something about us and then so think about God. I just want to tell you that I've learned in my years of walking with Jesus that if I will not use the courage that God makes available to me to speak my words clearly, other people will probably misunderstand what I intend. We are not good at reading minds. We don't. I don't understand your motives. I don't understand your intentions. I don't understand your hopes and you don't understand mine. The best we can do, unless we're willing to use our words, is to grant space enough for somebody uh, to live for God in a way I don't yet understand. I, I, I want to mention this. Why do we do what we do? Sometimes it is for others to notice and think something in particular about me or think something in particular about God. But there are times when we do what we do for God to notice, but let's be careful. Do we want God to notice how big our tassels are, how big our prayer bands are, how many times I've been to church, what I volunteered to do, especially if it's a church committee, you know, you go there to die, don't you? And so, um, is are we hoping God thinks something about ourselves? If that's true, then we're trying to prove ourselves to God. My friends, he created you. God already knows more about you than you know about yourself. There is no point in trying to prove your worthiness to God to try to earn the gifts of love and grace, even of redemption and salvation. You can't do enough to earn those things because they're not valued that way. God is already offering them as a gift to you. And so doing things just in order for God to notice 
I want us to be very clear. Sometimes we want him to see what we wish was true. And we have sold God short. And we've set ourselves up for disappointment and failure. Because you want to live by the law. Jesus even said this. You live by the law, the law is going to trip you up. There's no way you can be faithful to that. But he has fulfilled the law. So that doesn't restrict us anymore. It doesn't mean that we don't have to, that we don't have to honor it. But if we are doing what we do, if we're saying what we say as a person of faith, so that God sees what is, we have already been ushered into a holier place. And by holier, I don't mean better than before. What I mean is closer to the heart of God, closer to the purity of who God is and will make us to be. When you and I can get very clear about why we do what we do, the tassels, the prayer bands, going to church, associating with these people, not associating with these people, watching this, not watching that, uh, voting for this, not voting for that, all of the behaviors of our lives. Why do we do what we do? The most honest and authentic answer will always be this, to respond to God's love for me. Sometimes we respond with big fat tassels and uh, big wide prayer bands, hoping that nobody sees that we really don't pray believing. Uh, and we're really not sure what God's word would say about whatever issue we're facing. May you and I be bold enough today to be who we truly are and let that be our best response to God so that we can grow even closer in the next steps. I, I just want to say that um, that's a gift that Susie gave me. When I close my eyes, I can imagine her directly across from me uh, at the table in our church's library when we gathered for years uh, doing Bible study on Monday morning. And I could always count on Jingle walking in with a smile no matter how bad her body hurt and sharing a word of peace, a poem of encouragement, of being truthful about uh, the pain of her own body and sometimes her own relationships. That, my friends, was an honest and full gift, not only to her God, but to all of us who shared those times with her. Everything they do, Jesus said, is done for somebody else's um, uh, approval or recognition. May what you and I do this day and every day be an honest and authentic gift to God. Our prayers because we're afraid, our prayers because we're confused, our joy and our delight at all that life holds, everything. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for these holy moments. Oh, for the crisp breeze that uh, meets my face, for the warmth of the sunshine in the sky and the warmth of fellowship even across digital technology. I thank you especially for the warmth of a faithful disciple's life. For in Christ, that life never ends. May we be open to the message of um, the jingle of everyone's life. May we look at the prayer tassels and phylacteries that we all wear, the things that we participate in, Lord, that sometimes we get confused and fearful and so we do it for other people. But may we be bold enough, honest enough, authentic enough, Lord, to be clear about why we do the things we do, and that is to show our love for you, for you loved us first. We just sit in that love today, Lord, and thank you that in all circumstances we find opportunity and reason to celebrate and to hope even when our hearts are breaking and we claim this promise you are close to those who are brokenhearted and those who are crushed in spirit 
we will not be undone because of your love, your grace, and your mercy. I pray that for all of those who are hurting today, hurting because of grief, hurting because they realize they've depended on tassels and prayer bands instead of leaning on God. You are our creator, our friend, our redeemer, our brother, our power, and our constant in this life, and we love you in the name of God. Amen. My friends, thank you for your patience and for sharing this time with me today. Blessings on you and the rest of these hours. May you find God in a surprising and deep and loving way. Amen. See ya.